الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم الصلاة والتسليما يلقان بمقام أمير الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا وحبيبنا محمدا رسول الله خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين صل اللهم وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الأمين وعلى آله وصحابته الغر الميمين أما بعد جماعة المسلمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Tonight is the 15th night of Sha'ban. Allahumma barik lana fi Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. We have lost many in the previous year. Loved ones, brothers and sisters in Islam. We see what happened in Turkey and Sham. Over 50,000 that fasted last Ramadan but didn't make it for this Ramadan. May Allah cause us to make this Ramadan. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Jamaat al-Muslimin, I'm going to focus on one thing and one thing alone tonight. As we spoke on Friday, you bring your bucket, you bring your bucket. That inshallah ta'ala, we are preparing to fill our vessels, our tanks of iman, to rejuvenate the shield of taqwa, to gather up all the good deeds that will be multiplied for us in the month of Ramadan. But first we need to mend the vessel. First we need to fix the bucket. There's some holes in the bucket. And we spoke about two aspects on Friday. And I'm only going to speak about the one tonight. Because it has very much to do with the significance of this night. As in the hadith narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. And this hadith is according to the muhaddithin. Sahihun or at least hasanun bi majmu'i turuqihi. When looking at all the narrations, you put them together. This is an authentic hadith about this night of the 15th of Sha'ban. When Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu tubaraka wa ta'ala anhu wa arda, qala qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna allaha yattali'u ila jami'i khalqihi laylat al-nisfi min Sha'ban, fayaghfiru li jami'i khalqihi illa li mushrikin aw mushahin. That indeed Allah looks at his creation on the 15th night of Sha'ban and he forgives his entire creation of Tawheed. And this is where the first one comes in except for the one who is associating partners in the worship of Allah that disqualifies them from being of Ahl al-Tawheed wal-mushahin wal-shahna huwa al-adawa and the one who has enmity in their hearts for another Muslim so Jamaat al-Muslimin we had from Friday to already mend this particular hole in our bucket even if we can just send a message or make a call or even better go to the person extend out our hands as we heard on Friday when two Muslims come together to reconcile a hundred mercies descend from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 90 for the one who extends out their hand and 10 for the one who receives that hand obviously that's brother to brother sister to sister if it is in terms of a brother to a sister or a sister to a brother I'm not talking about a qarib I'm not talking about relatives but you know what I mean. In other words, the one that initiates the reconciliation, they will receive 90 of the mercies 
and the one who accepts that reconciliation will receive 10 of those mercies from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jamaatul Muslimin, do we want to be of those who are forgiven on this night? Do we want to be? Of course. Most certainly. Then we must be prepared, Jamaatul Muslimin, to reconcile, to make islah, to forgive, and also to be of those who ask forgiveness if we have been in the wrong. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a deal with us, a beautiful deal, a beautiful trade. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes with us in the Holy Quran. In Surah An-Nur, verse number 22. وَلَا يَأْتَلِ أُولُوا الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّاعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرُوا اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ صدق الله العظيم Please, I'm giving you some homework. And I'm giving it to myself first. Go home and even for five minutes, just ponder over this verse in Surah An-Nur. Very appropriately, the chapter of light. Because if we are living in enmity, we are living in darkness. And this verse number 22 of the chapter of light will take us out of the darkness of enmity and into the light of reconciliation and love and true brotherhood and sisterhood in Islam. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in this verse? Verse number 22 of Surah An-Nur. Let them not suspend. Suspend what? Let them not suspend the people of virtue and affluence. Let them not suspend their beneficence. Their donations even, their goodness, their kindness that they spend and that they show to the needy, to their relatives firstly, to their relatives firstly, to the needy and to those who have emigrated in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا Pardon and forgive. Sounds like a repetition, but it's not because we can pardon with our tongues, but do we then forgive with our hearts? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do both. Why? Don't you want Allah to forgive you? It's a fair trade, isn't it? We put our foreheads on this ground, on the dunya. Why is it called dunya? It's the lowest point of our existence. Even if maybe we visited uh, a friend on Mars and we come back with a spaceship, this is going to be the lowest point of our existence. This earth that we are walking on today. A dunya. Adana shay. And we put this forehead. Ashraf al makana ala jasad al insan. The noblest part of the human body. We put it on the lowest point of our existence. And we say, Subhana Rabbiyal A'la. Glory be to Allah who is the highest. Yet we are in the position of the lowest. Yet in that position of humility and ubudiyah and worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Aqrabu ma yakun al-abdu ila rabbi wa huwa sajid. The closest that the servant is to their creator and sustainer is when they are sajid, when they are prostrating themselves. And what do we often do? What is one of the best du'as to make when you're in sujood? The du'a that we learn to make, especially on the night of Laylatul Qadr. فَمَا أَقُولُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ said Sayyidah Aisha, As-Siddiqatu bint As-Siddiq. As-Siddiqatu bint As-Siddiq. Umm al-Mu'mineen. رضي الله تبارك وتعالى عنها وأرضاه. She asked the Prophet Sallallahu if I attain this night of power, what must I say therein? He said to her, Quli 
اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عني أو الله you are the forgive you are the forgiver أو الله you are the forgiver you love to forgive so forgive me and it's not just the night of power I'm just saying that is where we've learned it from but it's a dua that we can make in every sujood and we should make it in every sujood because we need the forgiveness of Allah because nobody forgives but Allah in terms of our sins nobody forgives our sins but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we ask Allah and when we go into that sujood at least 34 times a day not 17 times a day because there are two sujoods in every rak'ah times 17 times 2 17 times 2 gives us 34 times a day we're putting our foreheads on the ground and whenever we make this dua Whenever we ask Allah to forgiveness with this dua or any other dua of forgiveness, we expect Allah to forgive us. Not so? We expect Allah to forgive us. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he wants us to have the best thoughts about him. In that he is indeed ghafoor rahim. I am to my servant as they think of me. So if we believe Allah to be ghafoor, he will be to us ghafoor. Jalla fi ula. But we must just put forward this condition. A condition that he has made here. We want Allah to forgive us. We expect Allah to forgive us. Aren't we then ready to forgive one another? Wal ya'fu wal yasfahu. Ala tuhibbuna a yaghfiru Allah lakum. Pardon and forgive each other. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? Now this ayah was revealed regarding Qissa to Ifk. The story of the slander. The slander that was made against a Siddiqah to Bint Siddiq radiallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala anha wa arda. Sayyida Aisha. She was slandered. And and we know the story, and we're not going to go into the details of the story, but you know the story. She was slandered with the worst kind of slander. Radiallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala anha. And Mistah ibn Uthatha, who was the cousin of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, radiallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala an, he partook or he entertained because the, the munafiqeen. They were the ones that initiated the slander. And Mistah ibn Uthatha, he entertained and partook in that slander. And when the innocence of Sayyidah Aisha was revealed in the Holy Quran, Sayyidina Abu Bakr was so upset with Mistah that he said that I will never give him anything ever again. لا أنتفعه بنافعة أبدا. Because Sayyidina Abu Bakr, just to put you in the picture, Sayyidina Abu Bakr was his sponsor, was his benefactor. Misdah was unemployed. He never had a job, he never had an income. And Abu Bakr, he was the one that looked after Misdah ibn Uthatha and his family. And he spent on Misdah ibn Uthatha. And so when he heard that Mistah had partook in the slander of his daughter, his beloved daughter, can you imagine how would we feel about such a person? Even if it be our cousin or even our brother for that matter, how would we feel them partaking in the slander of our own daughters? And so when he heard that Mistah had done this, he cut him off. And he stopped spending on him. And so Allah revealed this ayah. This ayah was revealed for Sayyidina Abu Bakr and for everybody that finds themselves in the position of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Let not the people of virtue and affluence amongst you stop with their donations, with their spending. With their beneficence, on their relatives, on the needy, and on those who have migrated in the path of Allah. 
وليعفوا وليصفحوا آه. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what Sayyidina Abu Bakr is going to say when he hears these words? Pardon and forgive. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? Immediately when Sayyidina Abu Bakr heard this ayah. Immediately when he heard this revelation. He said, Wallahi, by Allah. Nuhibbu Allah. He said, Wallahi, we love for Allah to forgive us. And immediately restored the sponsorship of Mr. Ibn Uthatha. And he said, لا أنزعها عنه أبدا. I will never ever stop giving to him. Just by hearing that verse. Why? Because, because Allah said to him, pardon and forgive. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? So Allah is going to look at all of us tonight, Jamaat al-Muslimin. And what a preparation for Ramadan. It's like, if we've already done this, then we've mended our buckets. And now tonight, inshallah ta'ala, if we have mended our buckets already, if we haven't, you've got to do it quick. Just send a message, make a phone call, go knock on the door, do what you can. But you have to do it, if it needs to be done. If we fixed our buckets on Friday already, or over the weekend, then tonight we're rinsing our buckets. Can you imagine that? We're literally rinsing our buckets. It's like we are ready, before we enter Ramadan, we are starting with a new... We start, we're turning over a new leaf. We're starting with a clean slate. Allahu Akbar. How much more are we going to benefit from Ramadan? Entering Ramadan in that state. Well, it can happen tonight. On this night of the 15th of Sha'ban, Allah looks at his entire creation and he forgives his entire creation except for the one associating partners in the worship of Allah and the one that has Al-Mushahin, the one that has Shahna, the one that has Adawa, the one that has Hiqd. In fact, in the same hadith, in the Rawaya of Sayyidah Aisha, which is a weak narration, but again, all the narrations put together gives us a degree of authenticity that she said, well, she narrates that the Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the mustaghfirin, those seeking forgiveness, and he will show mercy to al mustarhimin those seeking mercy. Those seeking forgiveness will be granted forgiveness on this night. And those seeking mercy will be granted mercy on this night. But he will delay the mercy and the forgiveness for the people of hatred. For the people of enmity. May Allah not make us of them. May Allah not make us of them. You know, Jamaat al-Muslimin, a brother came to me and he said to me, you know, Sheikh, my brother hasn't spoken to me for a couple of years now. And I'm not going to go into the details thereof, but let me just say, it was over business. It was over money. And the very day that this brother had come to me, I saw a clip from a Turkish brother that was pulled out of the rubble. It was going around, I don't know if you saw it, about the brother who lost the 18 sheep. And he was saying, I lost 18 sheep. And then he immediately said, I didn't pray. He said, all the minarets in the village were destroyed because we didn't pray. My wife told me to pray. I didn't listen to her. I was more interested in para, 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 alton, para. Para is money. Paisa, fulus, khel, mira. And alton is gold. He said, I went to England. I lived in England for 15 years. Just gathering money and cars. And He said, Allah took it away in 45 seconds. He says, I lost everything. He says, Allah, you, Allah humbled me so much that Allah sent a dog to take me out of the rubble. It was a dog who found him in the rubble. And then the people came to rescue him. A dog, he said. He said, 
All I have are these clothes that I have been given now. I've been given these clothes. He said, for the first few days after the earthquake, I, we didn't have water. He said, I didn't bath for those five or six days. I wanted so much to take wudu. Just to be able to make salah. Okay, maybe he didn't know about tayammum. He's going to go learn now. He said, but he says that even if the state now gives me 10 cows, because now, mashallah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brother, our Muslim brother, Rajab Tayyip Erdogan. Nobody's saying he's perfect. None of us are perfect. But mashallah, he is a Muslim president. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help him and make him steadfast. And Help him to continue to lead his people with justice and with goodness. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So he said, even if I get these 10 cows now from the state, he said, Wallahi, all of their milk I will give fi sabilillah. But he says, all I want now is to be able to pray and to learn the Quran. To break ties over money? Or for anything for that matter. But I mean over money. Over the most... Over the lowest, over the most insignificant entity in the creation of Allah. In Allah's eyes. In Allah's eyes. لو كانت الدنيا تعدل عند الله جناح بعوضة ما سقى كافرا منها شربة ما If the dunya and everything in it, said the Prophet ﷺ, was worth more to Allah than the wing of a mosquito, Allah wouldn't have given the kuffar one drop of water. الدنيا ملعونة ملعون ما فيها إلا ما كان لله منها. The Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the dunya is cursed. Everything in the dunya is cursed, except that which is for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." جماعة المسلمين فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا. Allah tells us, "Don't be deceived by the life of this world." Allah, Allah has put us in this world for one reason and one reason alone to test us. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. It is you created death and life in order to test you whom of you are best in good deeds. It's a test, and part of that test is Allah is testing us with each other, brother to brother, husband to wife, wife to husband, children to parents, parents to children, employer to employee, employee to employer, neighbor to neighbor, and I can go on. Allah is testing us. Surah Al-Furqan, verse number 20. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ You know, subhanAllah, whenever I recite this verse, I see a very good friend of mine. He's an Egyptian living in Mecca. MashaAllah, he teaches Quran in the Haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. Sheikh Yusuf Jawda. Sheikh Yusuf Jawda. Any of you going for Umrah? Umrah? And you want to meet Sheikh Yusuf, you come to me, I'll give you his number. Wonderful guy. Wonderful chap. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. As we're walking through the tunnel from the Haram in Mecca towards Al Aziziyah, where Al Baik is. Did you love us? Al Baik? Yeah. We were walking through the tunnel, and he was making the tafsir, or he's giving me the tafsir of this ayah. And he said it like this. قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد عود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وجعلنا بعضكم لبعض فتنة تصبرون وكان ربك بصيرا الله I'll never forget it I'll never forget it because I knew exactly what he was telling me it's like it all boils down to this where Allah says, and he has made some of you a trial for others. And that's all the time. We can't all be a trial for everyone some of the time. But some of us are a trial for others all of the time. Not so? A tasbirun? Won't you then persevere with each other? basira, And your Lord is ever watching. Allah sees us when we... When we want to retaliate, when we want to take nurid and antaqim, we want to take vengeance when somebody does something wrong to us. And this is not the way of the Muslim. 
ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم وإما ينزغنك من الشيطان نزغ فاستعذ بالله إنه هو السميع العليم السميع العليم أو السميع العليم أس is two آيات the one is السميع العليم the other one is which is this one إنه هو السميع العليم صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى says ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة a good deed will never equal a bad deed a good word will never equal a bad word. A good reaction can never equal a bad reaction. Give back that which is better. Give back that which is better. So that the one in between you and them, the one in between there is enmity between you and them. After you give back that which is better, it's like, it's like they become your best friend. But then Allah says, وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا But nobody will attain this. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبْرُوا Except for those who are patient and persevering. أَتَصْبِرُونَ Won't you be patient and persevering with one another, Allah is telling us? وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ And nobody will attain this. Except those who are truly blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Jamaat al I'm speaking generally about our connection with each other as brothers and sisters in Islam. But if you want me to get onto family, I mean like the story that was told to me a few days ago was about two brothers. And the one brother, you know, not being interested, even if his brother wants to speak to him. Um, he said to somebody, you know, your brother wants to reconcile with me. Yeah, my evil net funny deen brat. I will need deen fuhoi. I say, Mal, what else do we have? Tell me, Billahi alaikum. What else do we have besides this deen? What else do we have besides this deen? Haven't we learned anything from what happened now in Turkey and Sham? And what's been happening to the Muslims for so long now? Allah is showing us the worthlessness of this dunya. And that even when He takes everything away from people, but they still have Iman, they have everything. Ya Bana Adam, عندك ما يكفيك وأنت تطلب ما يطغيك لا بقليل تقنع ولا من كثير تشبع إذا كنت معافا في بدنك آمنا في سربك عندك قوت يومك لقد حيزت لك الدنيا بحذافيرها Oh mankind says Allah in a hadith Qudsi You have what is enough for you but you want that which could inevitably send you astray You're not satisfied with a little bit neither are you happy with a lot Why? Because you always want more If you have your health خسونتيت الله أكبر if you have your health, your duck uh, or your cup, your refuge, and your daily provision, then you've attained the dunya and everything in it. Jamaat al Muslimin, I promise that I'm not going to go like we did on Isra wal Mi'raj, and afterwards I couldn't speak for a whole week. So I'm going to end off now, inshallah ta'ala. But just to say this. الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن. Those people who are merciful, Allah is merciful with them. ارحم من في الأرض. Be merciful with those who are on earth. يرحمكم من في السماء. The one in the heavens, جل في علا, who be merciful with you. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he says. Ar-Rahman, the most merciful Jalla fi Ula. Ana Ar-Rahman, again, Hadith Qudsi. He says, Ana Ar-Rahman, I am 
the most merciful. وهذه الرحم and this is the womb. اشتقت لها اسما من اسمي. I chose a name for the womb from my name. فمن واصلها وصلته ومن قطعها بتته. Whoever maintains the tie of the womb, I maintain my tie with that person. And whoever breaks the tie of the womb, then I break my tie with that person. Jamaat al-Muslimin, if we haven't, we've got, we've got some time now, we've got some time to mend that bucket, to, attain, uh, to rinse the bucket as well, to attain Allah's forgiveness on this night. We are not mushrikeen. We are mu'mineen, muslimin. May Allah make us of the true believers. Ameen. But if we have enmity in our hearts for one another, if there's been a feud between each other, then now is the time to end that feud, to make islah, and to receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً The believers are one brotherhood. فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ So reconcile between your brothers and sisters in Islam. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ And be mindful of Allah therein. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ In order that you might receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, envelop us in your mercy on this night. Ya Allah, help us to forgive one another. Ya Allah, help us to clean our hearts for one another. And in doing so, forgive us, Ya Allah. And show mercy to us, Ya Allah. And grant this Ramadan to be the most beneficial Ramadan of all Ramadans. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jumat al-Muslimin, for those who want to remain behind until Salat al-Isha, I think Isha is, will there be an after? 30 minutes? Yeah. Amallah will be reciting Surah Yaseen, insha'Allah ta'ala. Look, in terms of the Sunnah, there is no specific directive to recite Yaseen or any other surah. But you want to recite Yaseen three times, 30 times, 100 times, any portion of the Quran on this night, or any other night for that matter, there indeed will be great benefit therein for you and for the one who even listens to it. So may Allah accept from us all our ibadah on this night. And if you want to fast tomorrow, you can fast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.